Are you offering cleaning and disinfecting services? Well, you know, now is the time to talk to your clients about uh, cleaning and disinfecting services. You go in and do uh, clean the uh, touch points and all types of surfaces. So the thing is that you have to remember that you can offer a, a two-pass or a three-pass uh, system. And let me explain what I mean by that. So for a two-pass system, you can do a spray and wipe to where you're just taking a spray bottle and a cloth and you're spraying and wiping, wiping surfaces. So, and the first pass is going to be a routine clean. So you're going to work your way through the office of the facility and you're going to do a routine clean, removing soils from surfaces. And then you're going to make a second pass where you're going to disinfect these surfaces. And uh, depending on the disinfectant that you're using, it could be just a, uh, uh, you know, a, a wipe and walk away type of deal, or you're going to have to uh, go to a third pass, which I'll discuss later. But in this two-pass system, that's what you would do is you come through and you do your routine clean to remove soils. Then your second pass, you come through and you do uh, disinfecting. Now, another two-pass system that you can do is where you're using the electrostatic sprayer. And, you know, uh, in that case, uh, you're still going to have to do your routine cleaning, okay? So you come through, do your routine cleaning, then you're going to come through and you're going to do your electric uh, static sprayer uh, with your disinfectant. And, you know, for that there, what you want to do is when you're, when you're actually operating the gun, you know, so start from high and work your way to low. Because you've got to remember gravity, um, um, you know, everything, it's all, the mist is just going to fall, fall to the ground. So start at the top and work your way down, you know, and just continue to work around the office that way. And uh, so that's what you would do with that two-pass system. Because again, you're going to use a disinfectant where you can apply and walk away. And uh, the disinfectant is just going to air dry and, um, you know, be, will, will work out just fine. So that's another two-pass system. Now, uh, the other uh, two-pass system is when you're using a fogger. So now if you're using a fogger, uh, again, we still have to do that routine cleaning. And then we're going to come back and either we're going to use a handheld fogger or we're going to use a stationary fogger where we'll just set it up in the room, uh, turn it on and let it, let it do its thing where it creates a very fine mist, uh, fog, um, that will uh, we'll eventually settle and uh, uh, settle on surfaces. So, you know, that's the, another two-pass system. Now, the, the thing to remember, like I say, is that the type of disinfectant that you're using could be a, a, a spray and walk away, or it could not be. You know, you got to make sure that you, that you understand which, which uh, product you have. So in a three-pass system, that's what you'd have to do, is that you'd have to come through and do your routine, routine cleaning again. Then you do your disinfectant method, you know, spraying or, or, or fogging. And then you're going to have to come by on a third pass and whip those surfaces down uh, after the dwell time has uh, surpassed. So that would be your third pass system. Now the thing you got to remember is for every one of these uh, systems you should be wearing PPE. So for the two pass system of the spray of the spray and wipe, um, you should have an N95 uh, respirator and gloves. And for the rest of those where you're actually spraying and fogging, uh, you know, I recommend that you wear a gown, you know, full gown, uh, N95 respirator, gloves, face shield, uh, and be totally suited up, you know, um, and that's what you should do. And, uh, you know, people now are having problems with finding gowns and, and, uh, and masks and things like that. Um, you know, some of the gowns, uh, think outside the box, you can go to, uh, you know, some big box stores and they have them, uh, some paint stores have them, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, always check, check it and find, find out, you know, uh, don't just rely on your janitorial supplier to find, to, you know, to find your, your PPE. So now there's another method that people have been uh, talking about. Um, I was actually on a webinar for a school district uh, to where what they were doing is that they actually, because they didn't have sprayers and stuff, um, they actually took a, a paint sprayer and, uh, what they did is they set that up and went ahead and uh, did a fine mist on everything just like they would with a regular uh, regular sprayer. Now, then that's really the key there is that you have to remember if you're using a paint sprayer, you got it has to be a fine mist. You know, we, we have to have a fine mist and we have to have, you know, a control of our, of our pattern. 
So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, you just can't grab any old tip and, and throw, throw that on there because you might apply too heavy of a product. Um, same thing is true for pump-up sprayers. You know, many people are using pump-up sprayers to do a disinfecting service. Um, you know, and that's fine, but again, you have to make sure that, uh, that you got a quality pump-up sprayer that's uh, chemical resistant, you know, rings and things like that. Because you want, you want to be able to use this over and over and over. And the other thing is, again, is that on those pump-up sprayers, you, you end up having, uh, uh, you know, a pretty good sized tip on there. Um, you know, most of them that I come across will have like a, a number five tip. That puts out a lot of products, so you don't want to use that tip. Uh, again, you're gonna have to change tips and go to a finer, a finer, uh, a finer mist, uh, because that's what we're doing is that we're just misting everything. Now, people often ask too, well, what's the best process? Well, I would say that the electrostatic sprayer process is probably the best process because when we spray something, uh, it's actually going to encapsulate it because the the uh, solution is charged. So that would be the best process, but you know, if you don't have the equipment and, and so on and so forth, you can always go back to the regular spray and wipe method, which is fine. It just will take a little longer. You know, and uh, on the janitorialstore.com, we do have production rates for, you know, for all three of these methods. So you can go there, uh, go to the homepage, go to our Corona page, and, uh, you know, we've listed uh, production rates uh, and uh, pricing there. Uh, so you can get a lot of information there. Uh, in our private discussion forums, we're, we've, we're putting a lot of information in there too. Uh, so our, only our members get it, uh, both on the janitorial store and my house cleaning biz. But anyway, this, those are the uh, types of service that you can offer. You know, the cleaning and disinfecting, it can be a two or three pass uh, service. And uh, you have to, you always have to follow that. You know, the routine clean, disinfecting, and, uh, and wiping if, uh, if need be. But, uh, well, anyway, that's about all I got for now. Uh, I'm Steve Hansen, co founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. And uh, hopefully, you got a lot of uh, information out of this uh, video. If you did, go ahead and uh, click on the like button, give me a thumbs up. And, uh, you know, if you haven't already, go ahead and click on the subscribe button uh, to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we have hundreds and hundreds of videos on uh, how to build a successful cleaning business.